the brain on sugar, or how sweets affect thinking. Without glucose, the brain cannot function. However, sweets are not the best source of it, especially since you can reach for them compulsively. Once the brain gets used to sugar, it's hard for it to give it up. Meanwhile, too much carbohydrate is bad for him. Researchers at Aarhus University warn, the conclusion of our study is clear. Sugar alters the brain's reward system in a similar way to the use of addictive substances. The authors of the study published in the journal Scientific Reports gave fresh water to pigs and examined their brains. After only 12 days, we noticed significant changes in the dopamine and opioid systems. In fact, the opioid system, which is part of the brain chemistry associated with well-being and pleasure, was activated after the first administration, says experiment author Michael Winterdahl. As he explains, when we experience something that makes sense to us, the brain rewards us with a sense of contentment and happiness. These can be social contacts, learning something new, professional successes, or, for example, sex. However, some substances can have similar effects, including drugs and, it turns out, also sugar. If sugar can alter the brain's reward circuitry in as little as 12 days, as we saw in the pig experiment, you can imagine how natural stimuli like learning and social interaction are pushed aside and replaced with sugar and other chemicals. We all demand dopamine. If something causes its stronger release, we choose it, emphasizes the researcher. He explains that his experiment is of particular importance because previous experiments of this type were mainly carried out on rodents. And rodents have brains less similar to those of humans than pigs. Addiction to sugar may be a bit of an exaggeration, but many studies indicate a strong, in a sense addictive effect of this substance. The authors of the review, published in the British Journal of Sports Medicine, report that in animal experiments, sugar caused more symptoms than would be considered addictive. They exchange e.g. strong desire for the next dose, developing tolerance, unpleasant withdrawal symptoms, effects on the opioid system. Sugar addiction appears to be an addiction to endogenous opioids released during eating. The evidence described in the literature, in both animals and humans, shows clear similarities between drug use and sugar eating from the point of view of brain neurochemistry as well as from a behavioral point of view. As with any trap, it is better to get out of this one, also for the sake of the brain itself. Research indicates, among others to an increased risk of Alzheimer's disease with too high glucose levels in the body, and, for example, kitchen sugar is an easily digestible source. A team from Washington University School of Medicine in St. Louis, in experiments on mice, discovered, for example, that elevated blood glucose levels quickly increase the concentration of beta amyloid in the brain, a protein typical of this disease. Our results suggest that diabetes or other disorders that make it difficult to control sugar levels can have a detrimental effect on brain function and aggravate neurological problems such as Alzheimer's disease, says Dr. Shannon McCauley, lead author of the discovery. The results of a study conducted at the Boston University School of Medicine with the participation of a group of volunteers observed for many years agree with this. The researchers found that higher glucose levels in midlife were associated with a marked increase in later onset Alzheimer's risk. It is worth mentioning that a similar correlation also exists in the case of high cholesterol and triglycerides. The potential effects, they say, could be broader. The effects of these risk factors, especially glucose levels, may not be specific to Alzheimer's disease, 
but may contribute to other forms of dementia, the researchers write in their paper. Not only thoughts and ways of solving problems are created in the brain, but also emotions. Here, as it turns out, sugar can also spoil a lot. Research suggests, for example, a correlation between high consumption of sugary foods and drinks and the risk of depression. Researchers from University College London took a closer look at the links between sugar consumption and various common mental disorders, including depression. By analyzing data from the UK's long-term Whitehall II epidemiology study, they found a clear link between sugar consumption and poorer mental health. Apart from depression, these associations could not be explained by other elements of diet, socioeconomic or demographic factors. Importantly, the analysis allowed to rule out the inverse relationship, that is, the influence of mental disorders on sugar consumption. This concerned mainly men, although the difference may have resulted from their greater participation in the project. In conclusion, we conclude that our study provides evidence that the consumption of sugar with sugary foods and drinks increases the risk of mood disorders in men and shows similar but limited evidence for both sexes. In view of the prevalence of mood disorders and the consumption of two to three times the recommended sugar intake, our results suggest that strategies to reduce sugar consumption could support other methods of preventing depression. However, there is also the other side of the coin. The thing is, the brain uses glucose as fuel to function. A team from Temple University even showed that its deficiency in this organ predisposed to the development of Alzheimer's disease. As the researchers explain, Previous studies showed a decrease in the amount of this substance in the brains of people with this type of dementia. But it was not clear where the cause and where the effect was. The changes concerned mainly the hippocampus, one of the key regions for memory. Scientists gave healthy mice for a long time a substance that blocks the entry of glucose into cells, and then tested their memory and examined their brains. Rodents treated with the substance fared much worse, and microscopic examinations showed damage to the neurons. Further analysis pointed to processes seen in Alzheimer's disease. According to the researchers, the discovery supports the theory that episodes of glucose deficiency in brain cells accompanying diabetes damage the brain over time. It is very likely that diabetes is associated with these types of episodes when glucose cannot enter cells, says study author Professor Domenico Pratico, who, however, draws attention here mainly to insulin resistance, which disrupts glucose transport. When it comes to carbohydrates in the diet, with a typical Western diet, you don't really need to worry about the deficiency. A greater threat may be rather an excess of particularly easily digestible carbohydrates, which are not conducive to health for many other reasons. So when we look at a cookie or candy, even though the brain may be telling you what a great treat they are, it's better to listen to the part of it that, in a voice of reason, says, too much is not healthy. Uranus's moons under a magnifying glass. There may be liquid water on them. The information collected by the Voyager spacecraft continues to allow for new discoveries. NASA researchers have reanalyzed old data, this time using modern computer modeling techniques. Thanks to this, it was possible to determine that four of the five largest moons of Uranus may have liquid water. The oceans are supposed to lie between the ice shells and the cores of the gas giant's natural satellites. Uranus is the seventh planet of the solar system. It is a gas giant. Although scientists sometimes refer to both Uranus and Neptune as ice giants, 
This is because the atmospheres of these planets, consisting primarily of hydrogen and helium, contain more frozen volatiles than the larger gas giants. Uranus is the coldest planet in the solar system. The minimum temperature there is minus 224 degrees Celsius. In addition to the coldest atmosphere, Uranus is also distinguished by its axis of rotation, which is strongly inclined and is located almost in the plane of the planet's orbit. Therefore, its poles lie where most planets in the solar system have an equator. Uranus has a ring system and numerous moons. In total, there are at least 27 natural satellites orbiting Uranus. The five largest are Titania, approximately 1,578 kilometers in diameter, Oberon, approximately 1,522 kilometers in diameter, Umbriel, approximately 1,169 kilometers in diameter, Ariel, approximately 1,158 kilometers in diameter, and Miranda, approximately 471 kilometers in diameter. The new findings suggest that four of them may host oceans tens of kilometers deep. Scientists have long believed that due to Titania's large size, it could trap internal heat and therefore have a liquid ocean. Other moons were previously widely thought to be too small to contain liquid. However, according to new analysis, water may also be found on Ariel, Oberon and Umbriel. Of the largest natural satellites of Uranus, only Miranda does not have conditions conducive to the occurrence of a life-giving fluid. The description and results of the research have been published in the Journal of Geophysical Research, Planets. Soon, scientists want to send a probe to take a closer look at Uranus. In preparation for such a mission, researchers are already focusing their attention on the planet to deepen their understanding of the mysterious Uranus system. The new work could provide insight into how a future mission might study the planet's moons. But the paper also has implications beyond Uranus, said lead author Julie Castillo Roger of NASA's Jet Propulsion Laboratory in Southern California. When it comes to dwarf planets and moons, scientists have previously found evidence of oceans in several unlikely places, including the dwarf planet Ceres and Saturn's moon Mimas. So there are heat retention mechanisms that we don't fully understand. In our work, we check what they can be and how they relate to other bodies in the solar system, explains Castillo Roger. The study re-analyzed data collected during Voyager 2's Uranus flybys in the 1980s and from more recent ground-based observations. The authors built computer models with additional information about water discovered on other celestial bodies, such as on Saturn's moon Enceladus or Pluto. Thanks to the new models. The researchers assessed that the surface of Uranus's large moons provided sufficient insulation to retain internal heat and thus the presence of liquid water. There is evidence of geological activity on Ariel, where material has recently surfaced, perhaps from icy geysers. However, it is not crucial that the moons maintain their internal heat. The study suggests that the subsurface oceans are abundant in chlorides, salts and ammonia, which likely act as effective antifreezes. Of course, there are still many questions about Uranus's large moons, says Castillo Roger. We need to develop new models for different assumptions about the origin of the moons in order to plan future observations, he explains. Understanding what lies beneath and on the surface of these moons will help scientists and engineers choose the best research instruments for future missions, and design devices that can test whether there is indeed liquid water deep beneath the icy crust.